This is the camera body I've been using for the past four and a half years. Well, today I'm getting rid of it and replacing it as my D camera with something else. Let's talk about it. I want to tell you all a story. The story may or may not have a happy ending, but it all started back in 2020 when I sold my 5D Mark IV, my 1DX Mark II for the Canon R5. Now this camera system was making some uh, noise in the community. It was a camera that boasted 45 megapixels, 4K and 8K recording capabilities, raw recording capabilities, all with autofocus. The only issue was it overheated from time to time, and we all know about that. Nonetheless, I was a happy camper and I've been using it on hundreds, if not thousands of commercial and creative projects alike. And it's been one of my favorite camera bodies. Well, being the Canon fanboy that I am, I was really happy to hear about the Canon R5 Mark II. Finally, a new camera body that could replace the R5, hopefully offering some specs that would rival that of the Sony camera bodies up the megapixel count, better recording capabilities, better autofocus, things of that nature. Whenever I look at buying a new camera, investing in a new camera body, I ask myself a couple of questions. Is it going to challenge me? Is it going to help me grow in my craft, both professionally and creatively? And the R5 Mark II, when it was announced, my smile went from a smile to a, a dull, faded look on my face because I realized Canon's just playing games with us. They gave us a higher shutter count. They gave us some better frame rates, better recording capabilities, 8K, 60 frames, and that's about it. And not to mention, they give you a new battery you have to buy along with it. Well, it did not check those boxes of being able to challenge me and allowing me to grow in my professional journey. So for that reason, I wasn't going to invest in it. In my frustration, I went out and I looked for answers and I found an answer. Medium format, the Fujifilm GFX 100 Mark II. I knew there was going to be some drawbacks, particularly with the autofocus, particularly with my frame rates and stills. But that wasn't a concern because my goal here was to trade off those things for resolution, for longevity, and the challenge of working with a medium format camera. Now as a hybrid shooter, I do a lot of work that requires being able to punch in and post, being able to blow up on a big screen. Extra megapixel count would be, would be a game changer for jobs like that. So I knew it was a necessary move. So I'm here today to unbox the camera, to talk to you a little bit about my first impressions. Part two of this video will be the hands-on review with an actual photo shoot in low light and high light conditions. So let's get into it. Now, buddy, don't be upset, okay? Everything's gonna be all right. You're still gonna be in my kit. You're still gonna be my go-to camera for those nimble shots. I'm just not gonna be using you like I used to, okay? Y'all be friends. All right, let's go ahead and take a look at this. First impressions, this camera, really good feel to it. And that's one of the benefits I've heard from other people as well. It's got a very good feel, very good grip. In comparison to my expectations of the quality, nice hard plastic. It's going to take a little bit of some getting used to coming from the R5. R5 has more of a textured rubbery feel to it. This one has like a still textured, but more plasticky feel to it. So, uh, yeah, not a bad feel though. Just something you have to get used to. Smaller than the Canon LPE6 batteries. A strap, don't need that. The removable optic eyepiece. Another complaint that I've heard people talk about is that this doesn't have any sort of joystick or dial, I should say. There is a joystick, but there's no dial. Look at on the R5, even though it is touchscreen, it offers this control ring and this dial that gives you a lot of versatility when making selections on your menu. And even better, when you're showing a client your photos that you just got, you can quickly scroll through them. But of course, if you're a true professional, you're not showing your client your photos on the back of your screen, <laughs> even though I do a lot probably going to be showing them on a big screen via tethered screen or something of that nature. But I like to, when I'm out at weddings or things like that, show the bride what we're getting and they always seem to appreciate that. All right. You get a variety of charging adapters, things I don't really need. You have some cable management, which is nice when you have your HDMI or USB-C cables. 
So that's all that's in the box. You got your cable, full viewfinder, charging and cable management system, along with a battery. I did go ahead and get, get another battery for like 50 or $60. Got the media for a couple hundred bucks. And this lens was around $2,300, I believe. So all in all, uh, a $10,000 package for an upgraded resolution count and hopefully a camera that will have some longevity to it all. We'll see if the story has a happy ending, but I'm thinking it'll be a good thing. I'm looking forward to getting this thing started. So let's start it up. The video side of things can't be ignored on this camera. It gives you some great looking footage and also some options when recording video. Uh, again, I'm not a professional YouTuber. I'm a guy that makes money with his cameras, trying to give you a real world experience of what this camera is like for me so far. Here's some mediocre shots that I got around the home studio filming at 5K Cinema at F-Log2. And I gotta say the uh, F-Log2 is great to work with coming from C-Log3. So I'll be interested to see what this camera can do in the future when I do more video projects. But first, let's look at the files. The raw files on this camera are huge, being medium format, obviously. We we'll had it 208 megabytes for that raw image. And once I exported it out of Photoshop, I was able to get it down some. But the point is, I uh, have a system in place to work with these very large files. And also, maybe consider not spraying and praying, just playing your shot, because that's what this camera was designed to do. Here's the image zoomed in, it's 473%. We still have really great detail. I utilized a uh, grain effect in camera, and the camera also gives you dozens of film looks, almost like LUTs, for your stills to choose from. So that's what you're seeing there. And that image was also cropped in already at 400%. Here's an image that I'm zooming in on, as you can see, and we're retaining all of our detail. We're retaining all of our, our uh, sharpness. The quality of the image is great. The colors, the color range you have is great. The dynamic range when working with this in camera raw. Uh, on Photoshop is great. I can recover my highlights and my shadows much more easily than I could with my R5 working with those CR3 files. So this camera has forced me to readjust and re-examine how I photograph. Uh, obviously this isn't the camera I would use just for fast moving subjects or to photograph an event. This is a camera I would use to really plan my shot and to bring a really high res image for a client or a creative project that I'm working on. So uh, I see some YouTubers making some incredible work with this camera and giving us a look at what this camera can do. And then I also see some YouTubers comparing it to the Sony a7R5 when they're out in the middle of the park during noon photographing a guy on a bike. You know, you can't do that. You gotta plan your shot. You ideally, the ideal home for this camera is in studio for your product photography, for your portraits, for your headshots, and things of that nature. So just keep that in mind. There's a particular purpose for this camera. So I'll leave it at that. This has been a quick review. I hope it's been helpful. Uh, if you have any questions, please let me know because I'm learning as I go here and I will be happy to answer any questions. Uh, so this camera will be in the kit, so there'll be plenty more videos coming in the future along with my R5s and my C70, and there's a C400 that I just got the notification that it's shipped, so that'll be in the kit as well. Stay tuned, lots more content coming your way, and I hope you have a great one. See you next time.